Shining every day all along the way, there's a rain. 
appreciate this one. Everybody can stand, fellowship, and we'll move around. Be going to prayer here in just a little bit.
see all of you as we've already said. Thankful for you. Welcome everybody. We'll get ready to go to prayer. If you got an unspoken request, I'd like to have an interest in this prayer. Let's lift some hands. God bless a lot of hands. Anybody have a special spoken request here? How long is little granddaughter Isabella? They took her to the emergency room last night. been requesting prayer for my niece, Brother Tony. She's been in the hospital. She had that weight loss surgery. It seemed like she just had a lot of problems since then. But she's doing better now, but uh, she kind of, we kind of think she might be under conviction. So let's, let's remember. Always remember me and mine. Let's remember Kendall. She wrecked her car last night and hobbled it and broke her nose. Y'all remember her. You know you can replace the vehicle, but you can't go out. Remember the Agnes family. Lost the, the kids lost another one. Yeah. My nephew out in Wisconsin. They caught them. They're calling him hospice for him today. It's only I like to thank the church for all. internal bleeding for one thing and mm -hmm. so I don't know they're still trying to find that mercy right. mercy yes brother Tony I'd like the church to remember our children and our grandbabies yeah I guess if the Lord's will first of next month I'm going to Minneapolis to move Courtney to Savannah so y'all please pray for us pray for me glory to us yeah, Lord God bless you be a long trip, I figure, but anything's possible when God's behind the wheel. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's your heart. Remember, brother, no twin. No one. Newman, Newman Plains. That mixed up. Brother Newman Plains down a little bit. Needs to pray. Yeah.
great nephew, and he lives in Illinois, and we talked on the Bible for about 15 or 20 minutes, and he seemed like he's really getting interested in the Lord. That's great. So remember them. Yes. And all of them, I think, is traveling back today, so remember them. Yes. God to give them traveling mercies. A lot to pray about this morning. Yes. A lot yes. to be thankful for. Let's pray for each other as we bow down here. Been awful good. Ask him to bless this service. Continue blessing him. He's already blessed us. And I felt him already in the singing and the fellowship, testimonies. And just ask that he continue to take charge of this service today. And give us all what we need today. Let's remember our country. Yes. The revival going on over where Sister Lois goes at Liberty. Brother Audie was telling me and had a couple of saves. And a wonderful spiritual meeting last night and going on tonight, so let's pray for that meeting too. Yeah. And what we'd ask for him to do right here was ask for him to do over there as well. He's able this morning, wherever they're gathered, his name is asking to bless. Hearts and minds free. So, let us let us remember all the lost people. Like Brother Bruce always says, it's our Christian duty, Brother Tony, to pray for those that don't know God and are part of the of sin. And remember those that uh, are walking this way in a new life, that are raised up to walk in the of life, Brother Tony, that they might be able to live their life accordingly to what God wants it to be. We need to thank, Brother Tony, the Lord Jesus Christ for paying the total cost, Brother Tony, for what he did for us. We're not worthy, not one of us, Brother Tony. We're truly not. And I'm thankful that I don't agree with the Lord of life, Brother Tony. I wouldn't trade a mile. I trade them for Brother Tony. I'm thankful that I have Lord in life. And we thank all the time that we see death on every hand, Brother Tony. But uh, we thank God all the time and it's not for us to keep our loved ones here in this way. But one day after a while, we'll get to meet them in God's great country. We can just picture in this life what it's going to be like when we get there. Just a small glimpse sometimes, Brother Tony, of what it's going to be like when we get there. I hope that I can make it to God's country. I'd rather be there and not up. Not down, but I'd rather go up. Brother yes. Sanford, come around and lead us in prayer. It's all going to pray. Everybody have a will and come down this way if you want. Everybody gets, pray. Before he gets started, remember Josh, he went to Wisconsin, and he should be coming back in a day or two. So also, remember Brother Butler, I don't know whether I mentioned him or not, but his sugar went to over 300 yesterday. Bless. <clears throat> Dear God, as we bow our heads once again, I bid you be in his name. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, for your mercy. Dear God, thank you, Lord, for the blood that you shed. Dear God, that I may talk to you. Once said to you, God, would you take charge of the service? Lord, bless me. Dear Father, to bow down. Dear God, to move around. Lord, and to try my very best, Lord, to give you glory and honor. Dear God, I thank you. Dear Father, for that precious blood. Dear God, that you should. For the pain and the humiliation times we thought we needed to yes, and you endured. Dear God, for our benefit. Help us in those times to trust in you. Dear God, asking you, Lord, that you would forgive us. Lord, smile down on these requests. Dear Master of all the sin and the shortcomings. Lord, I hope that we may not intervene on the stage of action. Dear God, that we have come short and that we have failed and miserable. Lord, I pray, dear Master, that you would cover me once again, Lord. With your blood, that I may be worthy. Lord, our friend, Dear God, through your suffering, your Lord, your sacrifice, to call out to you. Lord, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Lord. It don't get too late. Lord, it's never too early. Dear God, for teaching you. Lord, I thank you. For that blessing. Dear God, I ask you, Lord, that you would bless each and every request now this morning. Lord, that has come to our ears. Lord, that I think about them, that I listen to them. Lord, that I try to 
you understand, I'm the Lord, that you the Lord convicted us of sin. I can't. Oh, Lord, but you're you're master, I'm so powerful. Remind us of that spirit. Lord, but no one's realizing that God's working on every morning. His mind is working on the Lord of every place. Keep our mind upon you. No one is realizing, Lord. Lord, help us to look upon you, Father, as you come on the cross. Lord, that is not our answer on their behalf. Lord, in the Lord, that you will let us fell back in the face and of the cross. Lord, we thank you for that sacrifice. Dear Master, today. that you would lift them up. Lord, that through what you've done, Lord, that you would, you would, Lord, that you would bless your failing body. Lord, that we might have a hope. Dear God, that you would hold them in your hand. Lord, praise you. That you would protect them. Lord, be with us this morning. Now, dear God, I ask you, Lord, oh God, how good you are. as I come to a close with this little petition, dear God, that you would bless this service. Lord, that you would help us. Dear Master, that we may worship for you this morning. Dear God, in spirit and in truth. Dear God, that you may get glory out of us being here, Lord. And in turn, dear God, that we would be strengthened in you. That our knowledge, Lord, that our understanding would be increased in you, Lord. Asking your blessings on us. Lord, be with the one that may stand before us this morning. Dear God, bless his mind. Bless his mind with clarity, with understanding, Lord, that he may preach your everlasting gospel to a lost and a dying world that we are so needy. Lord, I thank you once again for all that you are, Lord, for all that you've done. Dear Master, all these favors and these blessings that I pray to you is in the name of Christ Jesus, your Son and our Savior. And amen. Amen. For Sanford, won't you sing a song for when you sit down? Bless you, Lord Sanford. I'm you so glad. song, I'm so glad that I have a better place. I'm so thankful that he provided uh, that he made it possible that we've all got a better place to be. Amen. <clears throat> Just suppose God searched through heaven yeah. and couldn't find one willing to be the Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul. have a song. Now we got Brother Ben here. Come a long way to be with us. He's in town with some of his wife's family all the way from Indiana. I'd like for him to come and sing a couple of songs. My Lord, brother, we're glad you all come to be with us today. Yeah, we'll more. Feel, feel right at home. God bless you, my brother. Take your hands. Mind the Lord, brother. There's a city of light where there comes no night and the sun Thank you. 
Can you line a maize and grape? Yeah, yeah, I can do that for you. Oh, maize and grape, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He's temperate, he, he's meek, he's, he's mighty, he's holy, 
I, I begin to think about the principles and the, the holiness of God, my brother, and, and, and we ought to be a little bit fearful of him Amen. and how mighty and how Amen. powerful that he is and, and all the things that he holds in the very palm of his hand, my Amen. friend, uh, our very faith he holds today. Everything about uh, our lives is, is held up by him. And, yeah. and my friend, I, I begin Amen. to think about it. Uh, there's only uh, one God this morning, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, Amen. my friend. And there's only one that we can go to today. And how that God, he, he manifested himself in the flesh in his son Jesus. And he leveled it out, my friend. There's only... Uh, one place that I can go today, and that's through Jesus and um, the sacrifice that was made on Calvary. I, I can't stand before God today and bring to Him myself and say I'm good or that I'm righteous, but I have to come with uh, the sacrifice of Jesus, and God has to look down at that uh, blood that was shed on Calvary, my friend, and then He uh, can begin to look at me and say that He's forgiven. Um, not anything that I did today, but all through and by the Son of the Amen. living God. Um, the Bible said that Solomon built a temple unto God this morning and that um, David couldn't build the temple of God um, because of all the blood that he shed. Right. Um, but out in front of the temple, the Bible said there stood two pillars there. Right. Um, one the pillar was called Joachim and the other Boaz. Um, and these names mean God will establish. Um, and the other one means in him is strength. Right. Um, my brother, today that uh, um, God chose Jesus um, before the world was. Right. Um, my friend, listen, there's a nature in man. Right. Um, and his nature is evil. Um, the Bible said that his mind um, was on evil continually. Um, so that God thought, I'll destroy man and I'll destroy the earth. Uh, my brother, his mind um, was always evil. Um, but the Bible said that Jesus um, took on the form of man. Um, but he still had the nature of God. Um, divine and holy. Um, the spotless lamb of God. Um, they judged him and ridiculed him. Um, but they could find no fault in this man. Um, my brother, today. Um, the nature of God is good and good only. Um, it's holy um, this morning. Um, but oh, the nature of man, uh, it's evil and desperate. Um, there's nothing good in him. Um, not one thing. Um, but the Bible said um, that God uh, sent his son not into the world uh, to condemn the world. Um, but the world, my friend, was condemned already. Um, but God sent His Son into the world um, that as many as would believe in Him uh, should be saved today. As many as would call upon His name. Uh, my friend, listen. I've heard them come and say, I can't do it. I can't live the Christian life. Uh, but my friend, there was laid up in Zion uh, for you a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, and all of them um, that would call upon the name of the Lord, uh, he'll place upon that rock. Uh, he said, I will establish, I am strength. Um, God is my strength, um, my buckler and my deliverer. Amen. Um, there was nothing good in me. Um, not one thing. Um, but I came to Jesus and I repented. And he set my feet on the rock of his salvation. Uh, it's an immovable rock. Uh, he established me in the faith of Jesus Christ. Um, he made me and fashioned me into a brand new creature. I'm not after the things of this world. My brother, listen, from dust I came and to dust I shall return. But there's a man down on the inside of me 
uh, my friend that became acquainted with Jesus uh, and he said um, oh I stand at the door and knock and if any man would open unto me I'll come in and sup with him Amen. I have fellowship with Jesus and fellowship with God today um, because of who he is uh, my brother uh, he'll establish you he'll strengthen you uh, to be like him uh, my friend he is holy um, holy holy um, the Lord God almighty um, all things um, are made by him uh, not, uh, not anything without him that was made was made right. all things um, were made by him uh, today listen um, one of the most uh, profound things um, written in the word of God is the introduction of the book um, in the beginning um, God created the heavens and the earth um, all things are made by him uh, brother listen uh, what's that tell you today uh, brother he's worthy to be trusted Amen. Um, he's worthy uh, to put your faith in today um, all things were made by him um, no trouble in this life uh, brother he can't move it out of your way I uh, can't strengthen you up how uh, to walk right over it uh, or to get around it uh, nothing in this life uh, that he can't bring you through all things are made by him and are placed under his feet uh, this morning I believe today uh, brother listen I've heard him come again and again uh, I can uh, quit doing this one thing um, brother listen take it to Jesus Amen. Um, lay it down there right. um, he'll cure you um, brother of all iniquity um, of all sin um, what he done for me um, he can do for anybody um, he's no respecter of person uh, he is the mighty God Amen. Um, the wonderful counselor today uh, in him uh, will I put my trust um, it's a true and a faithful saying uh, what Peter said to Jesus um, where could I go um, but unto you uh, for right. thou hast the words of eternal life um, all things are made by him um, where are you going to go today uh, my brother uh, when you have trouble uh, when you have heartache um, where are you going to go uh, my friend listen um, the world may run um, to the bottle um, they may run uh, to the counselors and the, and the doctors of this world yeah. uh, but where could I go uh, but unto Jesus Amen. Um, all things are made by him uh, brother listen uh, oh I've heard him say well I've got this or that problem uh, put your trust in Jesus um, there's nowhere else to go Amen. Uh, but unto him uh, all things are made by him today That's right. oh um, I heard uh, in the word of God how um, they tried to measure up uh, to the Lord uh, uh, place their post by his post uh, um, uh, place their threshold by his threshold uh, um, but his standard is so high uh, um, there's no uh, man or no doctor uh, um, that can make you a better you uh, uh, that can make you uh, uh, the world tell you to be a better person uh, uh, but no uh, uh, listen the standard of God uh, is so high uh, and far above my understanding uh, that he's the only source today uh, the only one I can go to uh, when I'm thirsty uh, when I'm hungry uh, when I'm uh, uh, naked and need clothes uh, I turn to him uh, because he has all things and all power today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Where are you going to go but unto him? That's right. Where are you going to go but unto him? Hey, they, they tried, uh, the Bible said in the book of Romans, they stood up and they began to teach one thing and they was doing another. That's right. <laughs> they began to try and find the goodness and the merit in the circumcision. 
But my friend, all men are created equal in the sight of God. That's right. All placed in this world and chose evil. And that's why Joshua said this day, I place before you good and evil. That's right. Choose you this day who you serve. That's right. Amen. Yeah, you see, God desires a people that will choose good rather than evil. Amen. That will choose Jesus rather than this world. Amen. And time and again, he'll take them and he'll prove them and reprove them and reprove them to show the evidence that they love him and will worship him no matter the circumstances. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's something we need to understand when we come to that fiery trial. Yes. When we come to that low valley, when it seems like everything's all dried up, yeah. and there, I, I just can't feel nothing. You know how Daniel felt those 21 days? He kept praying and praying and praying and praying, and still nothing, but he was faithful to God. Yes, he was. Sure was. And the Lord said, I heard you the first time. Don't you have faith today? Yeah. That God hears his people, that his eyes are over them. Look at Lot. The Bible said that when Abraham pleaded with God that he couldn't find not even five just men in all of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. But God saw just Lot today. I want Amen. you to understand that God knows every one of his children. Yes. His eyes are over them and his ears are inclined to their prayers this morning. And he'll put us through these things to prove that we truly love him. Yeah. God wants a people that will choose him, good or bad. You know, I began to, to preach about that one day, about how that we stand and we take a vow to our wife about how that in, in good times and in bad, right. in sickness and in health, in richer or poorer, till death do us apart. Yeah. Yes. And that's what God desires in his children. Yeah. For richer or for poor, for good or for bad, for sickness, for health, everything that you might go through, that you would have a, a, a un, unfringing, unchanging love and a bond to Him this Amen. morning. Amen. That's right. He wants that fellowship with you, yes, he that does. He would call you His bride and the Son, the bridegroom this morning. Thank the Lord. You, His Thank children. He desires that of you. That in good times and in bad times and in uh, dull times that you'll still serve him unflinchingly and no matter the trouble that comes, Amen. that you'll love and serve him. Amen. Amen. And he's worthy to be praised this Amen. morning. Amen. 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 In, in the bad times, in the tribulation, in the very darkest time of life, he's worthy to be praised and to be lifted up. For he is God. And beside him there is none other. Amen. Right. Yeah. No Praise other Lord. measure up to him. I heard as the prophet Elijah called for them, 450 <laughs> prophets of Baal, go ahead and call out to your God. Call out to him and see. And they begin to cry and to cut themselves from the morning till the evening. Yet there was nothing out of Baal. But when the prophet came and he doused the whole thing with water till it filled the trench up, he called upon the mighty God. That's right. And he answered with fire. Amen. Amen. And then he brought the rain. It had been dry, a big drought in the land, a famine in the land for, I believe, about three years. And then the rains came. Oh, he is mighty, worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. God bless the you know, he thought that he was the last prophet. He thought he was he the last one. No more after me. He thought he was the last one in all the land. And yet still giving praise and honor to God. Yes. You know, there's times like that. You feel like I'm the last one out here. Yeah. I'm fighting all alone. I'm completely surrounded. But friend, the, the holy God is worthy to be praised this morning. Amen. Worthy to be lifted up. And he'll show you. In your blindness, he'll begin to reveal to you that there's a great army in heaven stand, standing all around you, Amen. fighting your battles for you. Yes, and without him, all of this is impossible. And we ought to lean on him and not our own understanding. That's right. Your eyes will fool you today. That's right. Your heart will deceive you That's this right. morning. 
We need to lean on the Lord. Amen. Let's Amen. lean on Him. God bless you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Enjoyed what Brother Ben had to say there. The Lord richly blessed him. Thankful for him. That he came by our way today. Thankful to be in the midst with him and all of you as well to be here today. And uh, hear what we've heard and feel what we felt. And to uh, just be a part of God's people here this morning. What a blessing it is. I'm, I'm thankful for that. Amen. Vicki, you and Sue and Bruce come up here and help me sing a song here before we go any further. Absolutely. This song on our mind sitting over there. We yeah. sing it pretty often, but it seems like it's on our mind after what we've heard here today. Brother, you lifted me up. Absolutely. Yes. God knows what each one of us needs. Yes, absolutely. You yes. ready to touch my heart. Yeah. Mine too, brother. We, and I give God the credit for it too, brother. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Just the mouthpiece. Help us some more. Low in the grave, Jesus lay. Bound by death, night and day. As soldiers stood in hopes they would, his body stay. Yeah. But on the third day, he arose out of the tomb. The story goes alive and well. He walks once again. I'm gonna rise, rise up when he calls my name. And the dead in Christ are born. Chapters, 31 verses of that, a third of that, those three chapters, you know what he talks about? 
the Holy Spirit of God. And not just there, he talks about it elsewhere, but it seems like after that he is began telling them about the Spirit and talking about what's going on with it and the Comforter and that it's the Spirit of Truth and the things that He's provided for us through that, that He, he came right at the right time because when you begin to look at that verse or chapter 13, you know what He's going through there? He's telling them about the betrayal that's going to take place. He's telling them about the death that He's getting ready to go through. And He's telling Peter, you're going to betray me. And all these things are going through these disciples' minds as he's talking to them. And then he begins to give them a little bit of consolation as there's all doubt, all kinds of, of, of questions, no doubt, going through their mind about what's taking place here. And as he, all this had, had been, been speaking, he, he told them here in verse 1 of chapter 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Brethren, don't worry. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to be crucified. Some of you is going to even deny me. But don't let your heart be troubled. And what good advice is that for you and I yeah. today as the yeah. brothers reminded us when the valleys we're going to go through, the circumstances may be like we were the old prophet of God. It may seem like we're the only one left. But let's still trust in God. Let not your heart be troubled when these things come around us. Ye believe in God, he said. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. But Thomas spoke up here in verse 5 and said, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? <clears throat> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And as he began to speak to these brethren here, talking and getting ready and introducing the fact of the Holy Spirit, they'd not heard about nothing like this before. Sure, we know the old prophets of old began to prophesy about what was going to take place. We know Peter got up on the day of Pentecost and began to rehearse what Joel had prophesied back there when he stood up there and said, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the latter days. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And he began to say, this has come to pass right here before your very eyes on that day. But here he begins to talk about uh, in order to get to God, the first thing we have to do and to have that consolation is to go through Jesus Christ because we understand according to all the scripture that he had laid out and the other writers were blessed by him through that Holy Spirit to lay out uh, that Jesus is the door to the sheepfold, uh, that he is the way, he's the truth, he's the life. Uh, and in order for us to get to the Father, we've got to come through and by Jesus Christ. Uh, and in order for the Father to begin to bless us with that Holy Spirit, uh, to dwell down on the inside, it all has to start right there with Jesus. Now, uh, was the Holy Spirit there from the very start of things? It most certainly was. This wasn't, uh, as we said, just this wasn't the first time that we find about the Holy Spirit or that it was being taught. Did you hear what the brother spoke of there in the book of Genesis in the very first chapter? That Holy Spirit was right there in chapter 1 of Genesis when he began to proclaim out there that day, bless God, that the Spirit of God began to move upon the face yeah. of the deep. Yeah. And God's Word began to speak and He said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. And the Spirit of God can begin to illuminate our minds in the same manner and that it began to illuminate this physical earth many, many years ago. And though we may be darkened in sin, though we may have doubts in our mind, the Spirit of God can bring light unto us. For it is the blessed hope of God that He's provided for us down here upon this earth and it's dwelling down on the inside of you and I. He started with the Holy Spirit back there in Genesis 1 and you know what? He finished with her uh, over there uh, in the last book of the last Bible or uh, the last chapter of the Bible there in the book of Revelation when he wound it up and said uh, the Spirit uh, and that bride that he was speaking about a while ago what are they saying? Uh, they're saying come. Uh, what are we coming to? Uh, to that bridegroom that he began to speak about that we can have the consolation
revelation of God and that we can have the love of God. As he went on to pray in chapter 17 of this book of John, I knew you and me having that close relationship with the Father and have Him dwelling on the inside of us and us dwelling in His church here upon this earth. Yes. What a comfort that is to know. As he began to go on down through here and say, he promised in verse 16 of this chapter, he said in verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Not maybe, not might, not, not possibly. If you love me, he said, you will keep my commandments. And if you all love him today, and even though he was talking to those folks there, if you love him today, you'll do what that he's told you to do. And you'll obey him because you've got that love of God. And if you're born of God, you're born of love. As he began to go on through here, and we begin to see all of this that trinity of that triune God began to take place. You notice there in the first part that you had the Son, and that you had to first go through the Son to get to the Father. And now he's telling these brethren in this verse, chapter 6, 15, or 14, verse 16, he said, And I will pray the Father, Jesus said, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Thank God today that He's provided for us a comforter. He was a comfort to those brethren as He walked around with them. And they found consolation in Him. And they found hope in Him. And they found safety in Him being there with Him. They knew of the power that He had. But He said, I'm going to leave you. But I'm going to talk to my Father. I'm going to pray to the Father. And He'll give you another Another, like I'm your comforter. He'll give you another comforter. <coughs> that he, he who? The Holy Spirit of God. It's not an it today. God. And the Spirit of God is he. Who is that? That's the Spirit of God. Of that triune being, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Those three being one. And we begin to try to wrap our mind around the three different parts of it. But you can't separate them to start to understand it. How you got them all together. And you don't just get one today and another one next week. How when you get one, you get every one of them. And praise God today. We began to think about something else that may go along with a look at our, our country today and how that it's founded in the government. Oh, we call our government of the United States. What's our government made up of? It's made of the legislative branch, the executive branch, the judicial branch. All three of those branches have specific tasks, specific jobs, but they are all one part of this government of our United States. And they all begin to check and balance each other out. And now God doesn't need checked. He doesn't need balanced out. But just like our government consists of three things. Our God today is made up of a triune being of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they all three have specific tasks to do in our life. <coughs> what else does He do? He's a comforter to us. We need that comfort sometimes. We, we need it not just necessarily when we're sad or we lose a loved one but to have the assurance down on the inside of our heart and that it's better for us as we begin to move on. And when we get to know Him, we've got the comfort of knowing that no matter what the enemy may do or come our way, that we've got the promise and the comfort, the consolation, and that He's able to help us as we go through this life for that word and that He speaks of there as a comforter. You know what it is? It's a helper. You know what we need? And we sure need help. And he's a very present help in the time of need today. Yeah. I need him. You need him. And without his help, without his consolation, we'd all still be in our sin this morning. Yeah. We'd all die and go to hell when this life is over. But he saw fit to help you and I as he did David there. When he was in that horrible pit, in the sinking sand, what did he do? Uh, he cried out for some help, uh, uh, some assistance. And what happened? He reached his hand down. Yeah. Pulled him out of that yeah. condition. Set his feet upon a solid rock. Yeah. <clears throat> and established his going. Not only is he that helper, but notice what he says in verse 17. He calls him something else. Even the spirit of truth. 
whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. If you're a believer today, you know that he is the spirit of truth. And you know that he's able to speak to you and to help you. And you can have him today because you believe in him. And because of that faith that you have. And it takes that faith in order to get him. He's not even pleased without our faith. It's impossible and to please God this morning without faith. And so the world doesn't have it. But but the good news of it is of the gospel message is they can have it and if they'll come through that same door that he started this chapter out with of oh, Jesus Christ we can have him we can have that help we can have that consolation we can have that assurance that even though we deserve hell He's got a home prepared for us. And He wants us to have Him dwelling in us while we're living here till we get to heaven one day after a while. And He's promised us that He'd help us. That, that Spirit of truth, He not only comforts us and gives us the help we need, but He speaks that truth to us. I remember several years ago as a young Christian, the old brother began to argue back and forth about the unsaved. And they some said the unsaved. They don't have the Spirit of God in in a manner they were right. Others said they're blessed with it. And in a manner they were right too. But it comes down to this. Every time the gospel message goes out in the spirit and the power that it has about it. That's God blessing our unsaved Amen. friends. That's the spirit of God witnessing through the word of God to our unsaved friends. And though they may not have it dwelling in them. It may not be a abiding in them yet. But it will come by and begin to speak to their conscience through the word of God. Yes. He's able through that word to draw them from a field of sin. Amen. Amen. Spirit of truth. He is truth today. He said there as we mentioned the way, the truth, and the life. And he's able to speak that to us. And then he said you, you, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. A constant in life. We've got things that may change all around us. He said there that he would come in, take up his abode on the inside of us, that he would dwell on the inside of us, that the Holy Spirit of God, those brethren back there, did you hear that, that temple that the brother was speaking of a minute ago? Oh, when that glory of God came down and dwelt on the inside of it, and bless his name, and as we begin to look at what he's done for you and I, he reminds us now that we are the temple of the living God. Amen. We are for the indwelling of that Holy Spirit of God that He wants to live in. And that it will not help us as we go through. It will help us as we go through this world that no matter where we go, what we do, He'll be there. And to guide us if we're doing wrong, what's it going to do for us? It'll start convicting us. Right. It'll begin to speak to us in a manner that we should. And I'm thankful today that John began to declare, hey, if you've done wrong, if you've sinned, you've got an advocate with the Father. Amen. He'll tell us right here in a minute who that is too. Amen. He's going to be with us for a little while. Maybe he's leaving, but I'm going to send you that comforter while that I'm here. Verse 26 of this same chapter, he begins to speak about it again. When he said in verse 25, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. I'm here, Jesus said, in physical form, talking with you in your presence. But the comforter, that, that precious helper, that's going to come your way, which is the Holy Ghost. There should be no question now what that comforter is. There should be no question now what that spirit of truth is. He tells them here, it is that Holy Ghost. Uh, it not only brings us comfort, uh, it not only brings us the truth, uh, but bless God, it brings us the holiness of God uh, that we weren't worthy of. Did you hear what this brother was telling us today? How unworthy uh, every one of us are this morning. Uh, that there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, there's none that seeketh after God. Uh, hey, we're all evil. Uh, our hearts, as he reminded us today, uh, are evil. Uh, I've said this before lately. Uh, when you hear somebody say, uh, Oh, the Lord knows my heart. Uh, meaning he knows what I have. Uh, he knows my intention and my relationship with him. Uh, uh, yeah, 
Yes, He does know our heart. He absolutely does. And that ought to scare you and I to Amen. death. Because He lets us know from this Word that our heart, the heart of man, is evil. Right. Evil continually. And we ought to have fear in our life if He does know our heart. He knows how evil you and I are. He knows our thoughts. Right. He knows our down sittings this morning. And He still yet loved us. And He still yet had mercy on us. And He still yet provided a sacrifice for our sin. But that Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, He shall teach you all things. You ever need taught? I need taught. You need taught. And the one that's able to teach you that Holy Spirit will be able to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. It will remind you sometimes of what you ought to say or ought not to say. And these brother, brethren Amen. right here, it worked just that way with them. And when they had began to hear all these sayings time after time, and day after day, when they walked with him and heard his parables, and heard his teachings and his sermons, and he began to let them know and that this knowledge is withheld from you for a reason. But when that spirit came upon them, you know what happened? It began to enlighten their mind. I began to remember those things that they'd heard, that they'd listened to him say. And today it will begin to remind you and I as well of the things of God. That's why it's so important that we come out and listen to the preached word of the gospel. That's why it's so important we read this book that's before me. Why? Because when we need it in the valley that we're going to have to be fighting in that we are fighting in just as Jesus yes. began to pull that sword out on Satan when he was tempted of the devil he went straight to the testament, the Old Testament and pulled out scripture on the old devil three times there we find it. And you know what the devil did to him? One time he even pulled out scripture himself but he didn't give him all of it he just told him enough to get his point and what he wanted to cross that's how Satan works he'll just tell you enough to get you in trouble he'll twist and manipulate the word pull a scripture from here and a scripture from there begin to try to tie them together completely out of context but my God today he can reprove it he can correct it he can put it right in its place. And if we will use the same weapon against the old devil that Jesus used, as I sit here a Friday night to say, Give him, Lord, I can't handle him. Then he begins to go on. <coughs> as he began to leave this place. Now they've been in the upper room. Keep that in mind. They just left in chapter 13 when all this dialogue had been going on between the apostles and he's telling them, I'm going to leave you. He tells Peter, you're going to deny me. And all this is going on. And then he begins to speak about the Spirit. He's going to pray the Father and all of this. And now in the last part of chapter 15, after chapter 14, he said in that last verse in verse 31, at the last sentence, arise, let us go hence. Now they're getting ready to leave there. Where are they heading? Read your Bible. They're heading toward that garden. We know what took place in the garden there. Where he started to pray. Where he was betrayed. And all this took place. But as he was going along there. I remember all of this. He began to teach them about his Holy Spirit. And he started out in chapter 15. Talking about the vine. And he said I am the vine. And ye are the branches. And now who was he talking to? Those apostles. But I feel we can rightly say today that I'm looking at some branches in that vine as well. And we know Jesus was the vine. And he said his father. And he was the husbandman. And he said today. And that me and you. And those brethren back there. We are the branches in that vine. And he let them know about cutting off the vine that does not. Or the branch rather that does not bring forth fruit. And he's able to do that. You know what? those pruning shears are when he clips them off 
It's the Word of God. Amen. Paul let them know it's sharp. It's powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. At the joint and the mar. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. I bless your soul today. It'll get down on the inside of you. It can work a work. A circumcision. As he spoke about them bragging about. The circumcision with hand. Hey, today God has made a circumcision in men and women's hearts. And that he didn't even leave a scar. An operation today. And that gets down on the inside of you. Yes. Yeah. Which is the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. What about that spirit? You said he was talking about all this spirit. Well, he may not have said it word for word in that vine and what it was. But we can read a little bit more as we go in the Old Testament. We'll begin to read. The old wise man of God said, The trees of the Lord, what are they full of? And they're full of sap. What's that sap do? Uh, you all got enough sense around here. It's flowing on the inside of that vine. It comes from the root. Uh, and it begins to flow up on the inside of it and then flows to those branches. Uh, and bless his name, he may not say, uh, after a word for word, that the Spirit's in this vine. Uh, but let's read our Bibles. We can find her. Uh, those branches wouldn't have a bit of life in them if the sap of God I wasn't flowing in them and that sap is the precious Holy Spirit of God and that water of life that he told that woman at the well if you'd ask of me I would have given you living water you drink of this water you're going to thirst again but the water that I give you will be a well of living water springing upon the inside of you unto everlasting life I thank God for the sap of the Lord and that Spirit of God and that's able to sustain us and that he pours upon us and that gets our cup full sometimes and runs right on over to our saucers and as the old brother said if you can't get your cup full you may have it upside down and that's your fault I put it right side up so you can get something in it I get the sin out of your life I clean your well out I like the old timers had to do go down the most hand dug wells and get the trash and the debris and the leaves and the dirt away from that spring down there so the water could start flowing up on the inside of it if you don't have your cup full today you may have sin in the camp there may be some dirt in your wells so go to God he's able to fill you up today he's able to give you what you need and supply those needs as we go along. I need to move on here. As he went on through this chapter 15, he said again in verse 26 of chapter 15, but when the comforter, there's that word again, that helper that's coming our way, is come whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, or he calls it that again, yep. which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Oh, I'm thankful he testified to me. The Spirit of God began to testify of him. Uh, it'll speak about him. And ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Uh, that Spirit speaks truth uh, through us as well. When it speaks to us, uh, the reason and be the point that he wants to speak through us uh, is so he can speak through us to this lost and dying world. Yeah. That's what those brethren did on the day of Pentecost, wasn't it? Soon as the Spirit spoke to them, what they start doing, Peter stood up right then. Yeah. He started telling those people that looked on this, why well, these people's drunk. Hey boys, these men ain't drunk as you think they are, as you suppose. But this is that. Here's the truth of the matter. And the Spirit of truth will reveal it to him. And the Spirit of God began to get a hold of Brother Peter there that day. And he stood up and began to proclaim unto them the gospel message. As he began to stand and began to prophesy about the prophecy that had already taken place. Now, in chapter 16, let's go on down through here and see what else that he's going to do for us. In this same chapter in that verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 7. Listen what he says. Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus still talking. It is expedient. It's to your advantage. It's advantageous to you, brother, for, for you that I go away. 
Now, even though they were sad there, even though that hurt their heart to think he was going to leave them, it was for their benefit yes. and for me and you, Amen. our benefit. It's advantageous or it's to your advantage for you all that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. Right. But if I depart, if I leave you, I will send him unto you. Again, he's calling him a him, isn't he? And when he is come, listen to what he's going to do. Did you hear this brother talking about reproving a while ago? And when he is come, the spirit, he will reprove the world of sin. He'll reprove it. What else? And of, and of righteousness and of judgment. Why of sin? Because they believe not on me. He's going to show me and you ourselves in a mirror here when he begins to show you what's going on here. He's going to show you how evil we are, how unworthy you and I are, how sinful you and I are. And that, that unbelief, the worst sin that there is. You may scratch your head on that and wonder, well, I thought murder, I thought adultery, I thought all of these. God does not like unbelief. And that sin's going to take more to hell than any other sin and that's upon this earth today. Is the unbelief of sin because they believe not on me. He couldn't even do some miracle uh, works there at one point. Why? Because the people there didn't believe. Yeah. Yeah. He could do a whole lot more in mine and your life today if we would just take him out of his word Amen. and believe on him and have faith in him. Right? Yes. <clears throat> of righteousness. He's going to show me and you through his spirit that we're all unrighteous, as Paul said there in the book of Romans. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and he shall see me no more. Shows us we're unrighteous. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is, I wish if you would underline that right there, the prince of this world is judged. Not going to be, who's the prince of this world now? Who is the prince of this world? The spirit of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That's the old devil. He said right here nearly 2,000 years ago, Jesus speaking himself, he is judged, present tense. Not going to be, not will be, but is judged, present. I have yet many things, Jesus said, to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Why? They didn't have the spirit in them yet. When he got them, oh, he began to reveal those things unto them. He was going to illuminate their minds as he began to allow them to see the things clearly. Just as he illuminated this earth naturally back there with that spirit, he's going to illuminate their minds on the day of Pentecost. He will illuminate mine and your minds today if we will allow him to. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. You're thankful for that God? Yeah. I need that God. Yeah. That Spirit will guide you and I. What's He going to guide? Guide you into all truth. He's not going to lead you in a false direction in a wrong That's way. Right. So let's trust in Him. He's going to lead you in the right way. For He shall not speak of Himself. Whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And He will show you things to come. Not only is he going to speak to us now, but he's going to show you what's coming out there. And he showed them brethren right there. And you think of who's writing this down right here now, John. You think of one that wrote down some of the things that are to come in the book of Revelation. What was that book? Read it. The key to that book, as we was talking here Friday night, are the things which are now, things which have been, and things which are shortly, shortly going to come to pass. That's the key to that book. He will show you things to come. He definitely showed John some things, didn't he? He shall glorify me. Who's he? The Spirit shall glorify him. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Thank the Lord for what he's done for us today. Amen. That Spirit will not lead you in the wrong direction. He's a friend. He's a brother. He'll be there with us to guide us. He'll be a comforter to us. He'll teach us. He will guide us. He'll protect us. And he'll be all those things to it through the manner and the manifestation of that Holy Spirit. And let's keep him dwelling down on the inside. And praise the Lord for what that he's done. Let's let's come to a close here. Singers, choir, come back up here. We'll get a song. While we sing, I don't know that there's an unsaved with us this morning or not, but we want to say this. We always want to say the church door is open.
there's one or more ready for church fellowship, you can come down and let us know. If you want to pray, we'll pray with you. If there's one that desires prayer, you can let us know that. We'll pray. We'll help you in any manner that we can here this morning. While we sing, everybody move around as you feel led here. I'd like for you all to come around and I'll let Brother Ben know you appreciate him coming our way this morning. Yeah. The words that he shared for us, we appreciate him today too. So Brother Ben, come around front here if you will. And while we sing, everybody come around and thank him for what he shared with us here today. It will be good, yes. I got one. 162. Follow the Spirit. <coughs> Wow. Uh -huh. 
go a step further with you. There's one or more here that's not a Christian and you'd like for the church to be praying for you. How many just raise your hand and say, by that, pray for me. I'm lost. I need the prayers of God's people. God bless. All right. All right. It's been a good place to be this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate all of you coming yeah. out and being with us. Thankful for Brother Ben and his family to yeah. come here today. Yeah, hope they come back. Yes. Be with I'll say this about him. He don't know this, but I'm real acquainted with a good brother over in uh, Indiana, Brother Terry Glover. He knows Brother Terry well. And uh, when we first met and started getting to know Brother Ben, I, I started checking on him a little bit. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to know somebody before I put him up here. And I, yeah. he'll, he'll under, he understands that and he knows that. You other brethren do too. So I talked to Brother Terry. We're close with him. And he's, he's got a good doctor. He's a, he's a coon hunter. He's a hound man. Uh, uh, Terry is. I, I know we got some hound men around here too. He said, but you better watch. He made cold trail on you. And uh, I said, well, he'll fit right in with our bunch because we got a whole house full of preachers that's cold trailers. So uh, we're glad you're with us today, Brother Ben. And his family. Every time you're in this area, you should come back and be with us. Even if you do cold trail on us, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you fit right in with us when you do. Brother Tony, I forgot to mention Sally and Herbert. Uh, Sally's feeling a little bit better. This doctor <clears> came <throat> to her house yesterday and uh, checked her out good and gave her antibiotics and cough medicine and stuff. And Herbert had got ready this morning to come, but he said he was just so weak he couldn't come. Mm -hmm. Helen texted me and Isabella has two different kinds of respiratory infection and there's a shortage on antibiotics for children, so we couldn't get her any. But they did give her something else in order to follow oh, up. She came out of China. She still there. has a really bad headache and a fever. Bless. Any announcements before we come to a close? Anything at all? Everybody has a happy Thanksgiving this week. Mm -hmm. we'll praying for all those hunters that's in the woods. And yes. All those family members traveling. It's a big travel week. So let's keep those folks in our prayers too. And John and Larry on the road at the North Springbrier County Camping. So I'd like to thank you for being here. Lord willing, next Sunday, Brother Jamie Richardson will be here to preach for us. Okay. We're looking forward to that as well. And don't forget the second Sunday of December is our Christmas dinner. Yeah. And to that and remind some of you cooks about that. <laughs> we have plenty of good eating out there. <laughs> All right, hearts and minds free. If so, we'll ask you to bow your heads and uh, we'll ask Brother James if he will pray this mission for us. Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Master, for another beautiful day. Yes, yes, Lord, thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here. Be careful out there.